to the sky Never let adventures pass you by Be free and follow your crazy dreams We're living our vision in the RV Come ride with us and you'll be free Today we're visiting Kelderman Manufacturing in Oskaloosa, Iowa. We wanted to take a deeper dive into the making of the air ride suspensions that are installed on all the Gretsch RVs like our Strata Ion. As many of you know, this is our second model of the Strata Ion, and the first model had a totally different air suspension. With the Kelderman Air Ride, we knew right away that we liked the Kelderman much better, which we have shared those reasons in previous videos. So today we're going to pull this inside. We're going to start off by looking at the suspension on the Gretsch uh, Strata Ion, what we have now. We still have the 2022 Mercedes chassis, which is the 2023 Gretsch Strata Ion. Very shortly, a week or two from now, we're going to have the 2023 Mercedes chassis that is still going to have the Kelderman uh, suspension on it. And that's going to be the 2024 uh, Gretsch Strata Ion model. To start off, we are meeting with the vice president of the company, Jeff Kelderman, and we're going to get underneath the Strata Ion to show and explain the rear air suspension. Then we're going to do a full tour of Kelderman Manufacturing. One thing that I was amazed with is how close these airbags are and still given the stability you would think they would have to go out right, further. Right, yeah well the biggest key is, is you know you, you, we would use this large square two and this this whole swing arm acts to, as one piece so where the where the extra stability is coming is being right underneath the frame right here and then we're up here on a really large bushing in here so that it helps with the top being top heavy. So you, you know, run the tube straight back this is all one big weldment put the bags in the middle and then we come up here and, and grab the leaf springs. And, uh, you know, this is just a true two-stage suspension. Sure. You know, all, all, all the little bumps are in the rotor absorbed by the airbags, whereas the leaf springs are a little stiffer, you know, to help handle the roll mm -hmm. and, and being an RV with a high center of gravity. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a great design, you know. This, this two-stage system my, my dad designed in 1990. In 1990, yeah. Really? When Dodge came out with the Cummins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And those trucks were just brutal. And literally, I remember I was in high school and he bought home this brand new truck. I was like, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. I'm like, how do you like it, Dad? He's like, I hate it. This thing runs like a nut truck. I can't even, I drove it home. I, I pulled out of the dealership and I thought I went off the curb and I was just pulling out of the highway. Yeah. And uh, so it's, so he popped the box off and it sat for oh, a couple months. And I'm like, what are you, you going to do with this thing? He's like, I got, I'm just, I'm playing it, man. I'm playing it. So he ended up building the first Kelderman two stage suspension on that 1990. Cummins, and uh, you know we built a few of them, and then uh, somehow Trailer Life magazine found out about it, and uh, you know this was obviously well before the internet, and uh, Trailer Life did an install and a test on a Kelderman suspension, and boom, overnight, exploded. Huh? Air suspension was, was built. Very cool. Yeah, as well, G1 Dodges. I mean, day and night. Yeah. It was, it was uh, awesome to watch that that progress. As you can see this has got the Roadmaster bar, so yeah. Um, you know, being being an RV, um, you know, the, the guys are are putting on a larger sway bar mm -hmm. uh, to help us sway. You know, and that's just you know increased center of gravity. Is all it is. Gretsch used to use the uh, the VB the VB air, uh -huh. yeah. So what's the difference between that and and what? The well, Kelderman? the VB removes the leaf springs, and they're on a, a a big thick leaf spring, and it comes out. Put an airbag on the side. Okay, so you got one you got one on each side. And I don't know if they, I think they still use a sway bar. I mean, they have to. I don't know. Yeah. You know, sometimes they only use, you know, on a semi, they don't use sway bars because they run massive thick leaf springs. You know, yeah. for those but heavier loads, you have a little more flexibility. But, you know, I know that this type of systems on lighter vehicles like this, when I say lighter vehicle, I mean not commercial use, um, you know, Chevy on their 5500s now is, is using that same, they call it a Z spring. Mm -hmm. uh, like a semi, and they write atrocious. And, and I was a little finicky getting it set up correctly and, and getting, you know, dual height control valves not fighting against each other. If you're on dual height control valves uh, against each other, you're in the risk of, you know, sway bars loading and preloading, and then you got different height yeah. control valves. So you can get a kind of a 
seems like you're going down the road, you know, yeah. kind of a weird, wishy-washy feeling. Now, one of the one of the bad things about the VB Air that I remember is, since it doesn't have leaf springs, one of these airbags goes out, and you're stuck. Yeah, you yeah. can't well, drive I, anywhere. I, you know, I, I understand that that is one drawback. You know, the biggest advantage of of, of the two stage system is, if you ever lose an airbag, all you're going to do is lose a couple inches of air, but you still got your leaf springs. You're back on your original suspension. You do have rubber snubbers inside, so you're not metal on metal if, if you ever do lose air. But it's pretty, I mean, this is a very simple system. We've got a very reliable little ECU sensor here with a magnet and that reach, you know, if you fill up with diesel, you fill your tanks, you, you load up a bunch of luggage, so you make a thousand pound adjustment. Well, this is going to automatically do that. And this is the same robust system I use on commercial shuttle buses, loading up 10, 20 people, getting on and off. You know, we got an onboard compressor, and where is that at? Right here, it's underneath the shield. So they're okay. shielded, protected in the winter. You know, keep snow and ice all, all off of the components. And what's cool about this is it only runs when you add weight. You know, it will mm -hmm. subtract if you take a bunch of luggage out and as fuel goes down, you know, it will, you know, bleed a little air off, but this compressor lasts a long time because it only runs and spurts, you know, to add a little bit more air to the bags. But, you know, like right now, I mean, you know, you could, you could drive, you could drive with the same weight and, you know, this thing may only bleed a little air off as you lose fuel. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, you could, you could drive this and only, compressor may only buzz two, three times a day. Yeah. You know, for 10 seconds. So the stuff just doesn't wear out. You know, our test unit, uh, was on a gentleman named John Jackson. He's a professional hot rod photographer, and on his sprint, he's got 350,000 on his. So, uh, so whenever we come out with something new, you know, like we're, we're getting our own controller source because during the pandemic, the company that makes these sensors, you know, I've been able to get them, you know, so we've been having to switch over and use the traditional height control valve like you use on a semi, but then mm -hmm. you have to have an air tank and, and you know, just, just more stuff to put under. Uh, so we're sourcing our own parts for that. Uh, we bought a tube laser, so now I can make this piece and my tube laser cut all these pieces, just every single one within a couple thousand. So when they drop into the fixture, it's just perfect. So we've, uh, you know, upgrading our suppliers, you know, getting new technology in the shop to, to, to make these parts. So we continue to try to evolve and become more efficient and make the product better. We also put in our, our uh, you know, a big uh, massive powder coat line a couple years ago. So now this stuff just is sandblast it, then it gets washed, then it gets a chemical treatment, then it gets dried off, then it gets, you know, a primer powder coat on top of that. So you know, it goes through a long a long booth to bake. So you know, we've got our we've got our paint a lot better than what it used to be several years ago too. That's our tube blades. This, this ain't awesome, man. You, you cut round, you cut square, rectangle. But anyway, these are uh, seat risers for razors. So uh, the new 2020 and up Pro XP razors, the seats are really low, so they make these little two inch blocks. And they just bolt in, raise the seat up, makes it easier to see over. So this thing cuts these out in about 20 seconds a pop. It's really cool. Oh, wow. Same thing I was showing on the Sprinter swing arm, that big 2x8. Same thing, it's loaded up, just cuts it out. You know, whether you want ovals, triangles, you know, whatever you need, this thing cuts it. Put your long tube in here, and this is the chuck, and uh, we'll, we'll drop this down, and you'll be able to see how it cuts later, but you, you need to still get it figured out. I need to hold the hand and do this too. So. Just absolutely perfect. 
and the holes in here, same thing. They're with like within a thousand. So when we run our bolts through there, everything's a tight fit. So these are cut on the tube laser. On our four link suspensions, we either use two or four of these on uh, on each truck. So uh, we literally you know, go through thousands of these. So now we're going to go to the weld area and you got stuff packed up. These are general medium duty kits, which is basically will go on 654s, you know, freight liners, stuff that doesn't have air right suspension. Same concept that's on the Sprinter, just you can see a lot heavier duty, you know, for these, you know, 26,000, you know, GBW trucks. The rest of the stuff here is just parts that have been tacked up, getting ready to go to weld. Um, they'll have to kick it on it, whether it's an inventory or if it's a customer's order, you know, it's getting ready to go get welded up. Actually, we're lucky today. This is the robot that's actually set up and it's actually running Sprinter swing arm. The same thing we just looked at underneath that red motorhome being welded up on the robot right now. No, we're done. No. No rest. No, no. I've been down so long that my mind can't get no rest. This is our powder coating line. The guys are going to grab these parts and they'll hang these on hooks. Yeah, they'll hang it on a hook. Hang the part on there. It's going to go through the sandblasting unit. Uh, right now, they're on lunch break, so nothing's running. They're probably fired up right after lunch. Go through the sandblasting unit, then we go through that chemical wash, we got their treatment, then we go through the dry off oven, and then turns around, goes through the powder coating booths, goes in this big long 70 foot oven, makes a U-turn, it's in there about 45 minutes, and it gives us that uh, you know over a thousand hour salt spray. Washing unit uses an iron phosphate wash. Well, first of all, you got you have a blower that blows all the, the media off. Then you come in here and it gets washed to clean all the media off of it. Then it gets an iron phosphate wash at the end, which is a respirator. After it goes through the wash, it goes through this oven and it's going to dry off all the all the water. And then uh, so this is what the part looks like after it's sandblasted and chemically treated. powder coating uh, booths. One's going to do a primer and then the last one's going to do a color. 
uh, on a lot of the, the sprinter and the industrial type stuff, we use a really thick uh, texture, uh, which has kind of got a primer built into it, so it only gets to one stage. This room is uh, air conditioned. Uh, still gets warm in here because all these parts coming through from the oven, but the biggest thing is it's humidity control. So that's the key, especially in hot July, August, you know, summers like we're rolling into now. You gotta keep the humidity under control, otherwise your powder coat starts to glob up in the guns. So after it runs through the booth, it goes through that 70 foot uh, oven, comes around, and it comes around here, and this is what we call cool down tunnel. So this lets the parts hang, you know, so they cool off enough so the guys can pick them up. Well, some of them will go on racks, some of them will go directly on table. This is very common, like a pan hard bar for a, a Dodge 5500. You can see it's got a heavy texture finish to it. Uh, we have other stuff that we'll do, you know, do red. Um, Got all kinds of you know, colors, but uh, most popular is the detection black for the durability. So right here, this is where this is our truck shop. Where we do the installs on three quarter one ton trucks, we do 4,500, 5,500, 6,500 as well. We're doing RVs or we're doing trailers. We, use, we have two pits, one that we were under there uh, looking at the Gretsch suspension, then we have another one in the manufacturing part of the shop. But we also, you know, we mount and balance our own tires. We've got an alignment rack so we can get everything dialed in after the suspension is installed. We have, uh, we have four racks, actually five racks out here. Um, you know, right here we're doing a 3500 Chevy. You know, over here we're doing a big 12-inch you know, lift on a on a Dodge. It's going to end up with 42-inch tires. You know, we come over here. We're doing a uh, looks like a chassis cab Dodge over here. It's one of our most popular kits besides the Sprinters. So it's going to get front and rear suspension. You know, let this guy haul his fifth wheel and comfort instead of you know getting beat to death. So when a kit comes out for an install, you know it's all going to be laid out on the table. Shipping will go through it, and make sure all the parts are there. We'll have uh, our bolt kits, we'll have our, our shocks, we've got tanks, we've got our air controls. Uh, you know, on all the parts to go. So we'll pull all the boxes off the install. That just makes it a lot easier uh, for us to get the box off and then be able to put the suspension on and then put the box or the aftermarket bed on it. This ain't easy, darling. Cause the devil's on my trail. So now we're in the shipping area. Here's what we have when the kit comes off a of powder coat. We'll lay it out. We've got checklists. You know, they'll make sure they got the correct airbags. They'll have the lower bag mounts. You know, pan hard bar cross member. We got accumulator tank fittings, sway bar, uh, end link mounts. We got the, the U bolts that go around the axle, pan hard bar. You know, you got just continuous of all the parts. So we'll, we'll have a big checklist. We'll take a picture of it, make sure everything is there when we when we send it out, so that we have record of you know what we sent out. These are all coil replacements for Ram 2500s. You know you put your fifth wheel on a Ram 2500, it's gonna sag like a rock. This will pop out the leaf springs and put in bags. This is the metal bracketry that holds the bags. You know, keep that truck level, you know, it's the two, three thousand pounds on the back. These are steering stabilizers. You know we have them for the Fords and the Dodges. You know, helps keep your truck straight when you're driving down the road. You know, we have our own uh, shocks made by Raptor. Uh, real high quality, they're black shocks that are really cool and perform very well. We have our own line of shocks. These are made by Raptor. They're made up in Minnesota. Clear up War Road, Minnesota, just a few miles from Canada. But as you can see, very high quality. Uh, you know, being up in Minnesota, they deal with a lot of, you know, the magnesium sulfate stuff, you know, that's really rough on, on your vehicles. But you know, this is sick coated, you got tri ray you got APV, uh, the, the valving, all this stuff's billet inside too. So um, really nice product. You know, this stuff makes your truck ride like a dream. This thing's really cool because, believe it or not, my dad built this in 2001. And he took a Peterbilt chassis and he took a fifth wheel, he turned it around backwards, made it up here, made the top piece, uh, and then his back is set up to use the three snowmobiles in the back, and then he pulled his, his Dodge truck behind it, and he's a snowmobile all the time out in Wyoming. Well, he ran this for, I don't know, six, seven years, and then sold it 
to a, a friend of ours down in Houston. Well, he really never used it, he just kept it in the hangar. And uh, we just bought this thing back last November. So since I got it back, we went through it and polished and all up. It's kind of dirty now because I've been using it. But, uh, you know, ripped out the interior of the cab, put wood floors in it, new seats, you know, big stereo system in it. Um, you know, all, all new interior. And then we, uh, we gutted the RV coach. I got granite countertops. I got wooden uh, almost built cabinets in it. So we, we're going all out on this thing. So really fun to have something my dad built, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. That's what I use now to haul the cars to the racetrack. All right. Well. Yeah, so we totally redid this thing. Um, I've got the front half done now. And the carpet literally just got put in Friday. Today's Monday. I haven't even got the shop back out to clean the stuff up. So, you know, so we made our own table and had this uh, Amish guy do the cabinetry. He's really, really good and he's reasonable. And, uh, you know, we just did granite countertops. You know, got all new blinds. You know, got the TV that flips down here. So, uh, yeah, we went all out on this thing. So, I spent a lot of time at the racetrack. So, uh, well, I just. You know, it's got a lot of sentimental value being that my dad built this. Yeah, thing. absolutely. And uh, you know, cleaning this thing up, we'll do the back half next. You know, and they, like we'll, we'll go to we'll go middle of January down to Sebring, and, and this thing will stay all the way till Florida, probably till the first week of April. So mm -hmm. we'll go down and we'll run some NASA events, run some PBOC. So I'm running an 08. I got a couple 08 bike race yards, and uh, get on the track and, and go fast. I want to go fast. Get him a suit. Hurry up, let's go. This is a 10-foot room in there. You know, to put in snowmobiles. You put motorcycles in it too. But my application, since we're going to the racetrack, I got this big door I just bought. So we're going to cut this out, put that door in there. And then I can just keep my tires and jacks and, and all the stuff we need for racetrack right there. So we can get to. I've also got just an absolute killer design wrap that an artist friend of mine, Scott, on a Cedar Rapids, has designed. And the wrap on this thing with the trailer. Stacker is just going to be off the charts. Well, I found that very interesting. I knew they made quite a few different uh, parts, but I didn't know they made that much. And I had no idea that facility was so large. Well, I tell you, the, the equipment that they use, all the laser technology and everything, that cannot be cheap equipment. But just love the precision of it and uh, the quality that comes out of that. They make some very, very good products there. Hope that was helpful to some of you that are interested in the Gretsch RV and wanted to know a little bit more about the, the rear suspension that they put on these. Those of you that are not familiar, well, they take the Mercedes chassis they remove the sway bar and they put on a, a heavier duty sway bar and then they put on this Kelderman air suspension. Now the model we used to have before this Strata Ion, it had the uh, VB air system. And the VB air system, um, we liked it to a, to a degree until we got the Kelderman system and then we found out some things that we liked a lot better about the Kelderman system. And I know we explained uh, a few of those things in previous videos, but the main thing is a little bit of a peace of mind because the VB air system that uh, they remove the uh, the leaf springs in the back and the VB air system basically replaces that and it has airbags and that's all you have so if you ever have one of the airbags go out like we were talking earlier then you're gonna be stuck on the road and uh, you're gonna need a repair you can't drive anywhere if one of the airbags go out with uh, with the Kelderman system if an airbag goes bad, you still have your leaf springs because it's connected to the leaf springs. So you don't have to worry about that. And then now, knowing how they're made, it just makes you feel that much better. But that's gonna do it for today, and we hope you guys enjoyed the tour, and we'll catch you next week. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, and hit that thumbs up. See you next week.